To the old man Wade show. I'm your host, old man Wade, and doing the two man part with my man, Just Greg. What's up? What's going on, man? How goes it? Not too bad. Uh, thank you for uh, visiting. I know you're in a um, state of God of War right now. Yeah, I'm supposed to be studying, but I, I had to show, I, I had to shoehorn some God of War in there too. How's the game been? It's pretty freaking good. It starts off kind of slow, and then I remember talking to my brother about it, and he was like, Dude, have you played God of War yet? And I was like, yeah, I started playing it. What do you think? Uh, it's cool. Like, I like it. He said, did you get to that part yet? And I was like, what part? He was like, oh, there's this part where you meet this stranger and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh, no, I haven't gotten there yet. But he was like, oh, when you get to that part, you'll just, you'll just, rem- you'll, you'll start to remember that this is God of War. Like, okay. it has like, these real dramatic, real intense action-packed sequences and stuff. Yeah. And when I got to it, I was like, "Holy shit!" Like I was, I was listening to a podcast because I like to listen to podcasts while I play video games. Same here. <clears throat> and study while I play video games. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I had the podcast playing and I was playing the game. And then when I got to that part, something crazy just happened. I was like, holy shit. And I had to stop the podcast <laughs> and really, really focus. It was just it was just crazy. You know, that's the thing about the God of War games. Like, once you, like, start, like, it's like, they kind of, because, you know, the, the tutorial, like, you know, press circle to do this and blah, 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 blah. So, I'm like, so I kind of figured it would start slow. But I figured that, like, if it was whack, the critics were going to let you know. Mm-hmm. And it's been getting like rave reviews. Um, I think the writer, uh, I think the guy who wrote the story for the game, mm-hmm. was um, reading the reviews and it brought him to tears. Yeah, I saw that. I repeat that. But it's, it, I am kind of sad that we don't get like the blades, of, the blades of chaos and stuff like that. But is, is he still just as like proficient with the axe? He well, you got to remember, I haven't played very much God of War. I think you put me onto the game. Yes. I think I played like the the third one, which is really good. So I don't have a lot of history with God of War, so I can't really answer that the way you'd like me to. Yeah, because uh, one of my own concerns is, and we're both Uncharted guys. You put me on it, Uncharted, mm-hmm. and one of my concerns was when you redo a series or like you know adding a new character, how is it going to compare to the other ones? And I haven't bought it yet. I might buy it tomorrow. Depending on uh, what my funds look like, but um, I'm gonna get it eventually. But um, when they did the new um, Uncharted mm-hmm. with um, Chloe, yeah, and I can't remember the um, the British woman's name. Um, I was like, I was kind of, I was like, I was kind of worried, but I'm like, you know what? The Uncharted team hasn't let me down yet, mm-hmm. and they still continue to be as good as they are. So I'm not. So I'm hoping that I'm still just as good. You looking forward to anything? The one thing I'm looking forward to, honestly, is the Spider Man game. I'm um, looking forward to that. Um, I meant to pick up Far Cry 5, but I just, I've just i just been too busy to get to it. And plus, I knew God of War was coming, so I just got to make time for some of this stuff. Um, other games? Um, I don't know. I can't. There's nothing. <clears throat> there isn't really anything on my radar right now in terms of video games. Um, other than God of War, there's really not much that I can think of. What about yourself? Just Spider-Man. That's the only thing I can really think of. Um, I haven't even got the new Marvel vs. Capcom game. You know how like deep I am to those games. Mm-hmm. But, like that new, The new um, game didn't look like they added anything. The character selection looked kind of whack. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, eh, I don't care enough. And I got um, Injustice 2, like like Gold Edition or whatever the heck it's called. Mm-hmm. And I've been rocking that. <clears throat> so Actually... The only thing I <clears throat> I'm starting to hear little tidbits of news for Bioshock. Oh one. God! So I got my ears open for that one. And other to, than to that, to quote a great philosopher, trash. Anyway, <laughs> um, 
And I don't expect any new Fallout games coming out anytime soon. If there's going to be a new one, it probably won't come out for another, like, two or three years. So They've been pulling um, those games out, like, almost, like, yearly, right? No. The, Far Cry? Far Cry, yeah. About, I'd say, like, every other year. Yeah. They, they'll pump, pump one out. Fallout, you'll get one, like, every five years. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, you know... I mean, it is what it is. And you know what? That's fine for me because I, I work so much and I... And I'm preoccupied with so many other things that I actually like that all these titles that I like and I enjoy come out at a very slow pace. Yeah, it, I, I dig it, man. Because it's only like, it's funny you bring up, uh, you brought up studying and playing video games because that's what um, what I'm writing. Mm-hmm. I have to, um, I write a little bit and when I get into a, like a funk or a slump, mm-hmm. I um, play a game for a little while. I um, think about what's going on in my when I'm writing in the with like the podcast. I don't know if this helps you, but um, a lot of times when I'm um, when I'm listening to a podcast, I get ideas. Mm-hmm. So I get the ideas, and I'm like, oh, and I and I kind of relate, and I try to relate it to what I'm writing, and then I pause the game, and I go back to what I'm doing, kind of like taking a breather from the actual task that I'm supposed to be doing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But I do that a lot. Like it was funny. Um, I'll come home at about four after work cut the game on, open the laptop, start my article, and, no, I'll start playing, and, like, so I'm playing, 2K is usually my go-to when I get home, it's just, like, it's easy enough, you know what I mean, and I'll play, and then I'll think of something, and I'll pause the game, then, like, uh, when Maria comes home around, like, 8 o'clock, I'm still in the first quarter, because I've been sitting here writing for, like, four hours, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. so that's usually how I do it when I'm, I'm going through all that. Mm-hmm. So let's get on. So let's get let's get to it, man. Um, I wanted to bring you in. We've had we've had like a lot of hip hop news over the last what like week. Kanye mm-hmm. talking about uh, his new project, um, working with Nas, uh, it's working like, to producing it or something like yeah, that. Yeah, uh, Pusha T, mm-hmm. and there's one more. Tiana I think, Taylor. Tiana Taylor. Yeah, thank you. Um, who is she? I don't even know who that is. Remember, she was on my list, like my top three. Yes, top yes, three yes, 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 yes. And I just found out recently she had surgery. Do I care? No. But <laughs> I just found out about that. But <clears throat> my theory on surgery is if it's if if I can touch them, they're real. Yeah. But I don't like that cartoony shit. Like they're yeah. really Look at your butt looks like an egg. Yeah, like oh my god. Like a sideways egg. I never got that. And you know what's funny? It always makes like it's there's a difference between like if you have an egg standing up how it has like a nice curve to it you know what I mean but when it has like like that sideway pointy butt mm-hmm. you know what I mean it, it looks really weird that space between the bottom of the butt and the the upper thigh and the, the butt back, cuff <laughs> that's where you that's where you that that's what really puts things into perspective yes and there's there's been a lot of that but I'm, we're not here to critique women's bodies you know. Uh, shout out to L- Lorraine Cocaine. Sweet Christmas. She's cool. I like her. Yeah. She's cool. Um, but yeah, so, wh- what do you want... Um, I was actually talking to a homegirl. Um, shout out to Debbie. We were um, discussing Kanye West and his... Uh, I guess everyone was calling him. Like, even like Sam Jackson said he's in a sunken place. <laughs> <laughs> but my um, homegirl, Debbie... Um, Joe, actually, let me say what um, Joe Budden said. He was saying that... Um, Kanye only cares about black people when he has a project coming out. You know what? I, I listened to that. Um, yeah, he kind of rear rears his head when he has something going on and wants the masses to um, have all eyes on him so that when his product comes out, they're rushing to stores to get it. Um, I'm not sure if I'm not sure if he's using this whole thing, all everything that he's saying, as a ploy to get attention and sell records and everything, or maybe he just decided to come out of hiding, speak his mind, and uh, people ain't feeling him. You know? Yeah. But you know what's funny about that is, and I don't, I have opinions on like I. I have opinions on both sides. On one side, I agree that with Kanye when he's like, you know, I don't have to agree with everything he's doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But but on the other hand, I'm like, 
you were really hard on George Bush, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But where, like, what's the other phrase? Keep the same energy. Mm-hmm. Where's that energy for like Trump? But as Dave Chappelle said, Trump doesn't care about the uh, poor disenfranchised. He only cares about rich people because that that's those are those are his people. Mm-hmm. Kanye is a rich guy. You know what I mean? So it makes sense that Kanye would ride him because he's actually looking out for him. It might yeah. be in his tax bracket. And uh, that uh, wearing that hat wasn't a good look. Good look. Um, it actually makes him look pretty bad among... Nine million followers. Yeah. He lost nine million followers. Yeah, he went from like 27 to 18 or something like that. Yeah, it was... That's crazy. But you know what? People get on him and other celebrities about that I don't really agree with is how... You know when they... Um, he met with Trump? Yeah. Him, Steve Harvey, and some other... Uh, Ray Lewis. Black, yeah. I don't see a huge deal with that. I really don't see it. Like, okay, just because you don't, if you don't agree with somebody, can you at least have a conversation with them to try to figure it out, to try to, you know, get a feel for them? What's wrong with having a conversation? Uh, That's the problem with the world as a whole, is no one really wants to have a conversation about things. And um, everybody wants, nobody really wants to talk they just no one wants to listen everybody wants to be heard you know what mm-hmm. i mean so that's a, i think that's a problem like i don't we've had this conversation about the uh about struggling with voicing our opinions because a lot of times people aren't really feeling it and then it mm-hmm. starts arguments and you're like this is a waste of my time and especially like my energy and a lot of times it fucks up your cool you know what i mean like when you like if you like <clears throat> for example we'll, we'll just keep we'll just keep it to the kanye west thing kanye west is riding with trump Mm-hmm. Cool, that's fine. And but if you say to someone like, "Oh, I'm still bumping up, but I'm bumping his music," you're like, "Well, what about his politics?" On the one hand, I'm like, "Why does it matter?" Like, you know what I mean? You don't agree with his politics, that's fine. Like, you know what I mean? But are you still supporting him? Are you still supporting what he believes in if you're supporting his music? You know what I mean? And you can't have that conversation because everyone's gonna hear, "No, you just shouldn't support him because of this." And it's like, well, can we talk about it? <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with a conversation. And if after the conversation happens, we do decide to throw the hat on and spread nothing but great things about Trump, okay, that's his business. Then decide, you know what, F Kanye, I don't, I don't rock with him or, or anything. But there should be nothing wrong with having a conversation. I agree. But, <laughs> and, 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 and you know what's funny? We have, there's a lot of feminists and a lot of um, super woke people who I love. Who don't want to have, who won't like have the conversation where it's like, so like you want you want to be heard, but you're not listening. Like you know what I mean? There are some, there are some um, flat out. There are some things that I'm just not hearing. I ain't hearing none of the Nazi shit. You can go fuck yourself on that. Sure. Like you know what I mean? I'm not listening to hatred. I'm absolutely not. I'm not. I'm not with that at all. But like you know, the conversations about like gun laws. I'm on the fence. But you said it best when it's like, people should matter more than your guns. Like you know what I mean? True. I'm on the fence about like a lot of things like religion. I'm not a in the boss religious guy. I you know I believe in what I believe in. I'm more agnostic than anything else. Mm-hmm. But I'm not gonna knock, knock a person for being Christian. I'm not even gonna knock a sat- um, people who believe in like the Satanic Bible. After finding out a lot of it preaches, well, for lack of a better term, talks about uh, like just basically not being a dick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But because this comedian said, yeah, the Satanic Bible just needs a better PR. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. As long as whatever you believe in doesn't impede on whatever I'm doing in my life, my day to day, I don't care. Believe what you want to believe. Yeah. You know? What is it? Um, Chris for Titus said it, and my wife said something funny too. Titus goes, "I don't care what you believe in, as long as it stop, as long as it stops you from robbing me at an ATM three in the morning." And my wife said it best: if everyone just minded their own fucking business, we wouldn't have these issues. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, There's a lot of peace of mind in minding your damn business. Like, it was funny, um, and I'm probably going to talk with um, Javi about this, uh, about minding your business. I was talking to him um, on this wrestling wrestling on web page. I paid shout out to Duke. Duke loves wrestling, his wrestling crew. I posted this thing about the uh, WWE in Saudi Arabia, and they're not allowing women to perform. 
And I'm like, you guys, the WWE has been heavy on like the women's revolution, mm-hmm. uh, promoting tolerance like of all races. Like in um, during WrestleMania, one of the uh, wrestlers rocked out with um, rainbow colored um, uh, socks representing LB. GTQ, mm-hmm. and there was another woman who's um, who is an out and proud um, wrestling woman mm-hmm. with um, rainbow things in her hair, and it's like, but then to go to Saudi Arabia where they're like known for being heavy against like women's rights mm-hmm. and heavy against the gay culture, I had some issue with, like you know what I mean. I was just I was asking this, uh, asking people's opinion, and this guy brought up a point which I agree. I don't really agree with, but he goes, "That's a problem." He goes, "That's a problem with Americans. Everyone wants to mind. Everyone wants to mind everyone else's business," and I'm like. Yeah, but you're like, it was like, I'm not for the hatred though. Like, and that's my issue with it. Like, you know what I mean? They, it's like, what's more important, the check or your integrity? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But hey, it ain't my, it ain't my company. So, so I just wonder, like, when is minding your business okay? Like, you know, when do you get to the point where you're like, I have, like, you know, what is it, the, the phrase, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything? Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? I feel there has to be a balance to it, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's look at the pressure shit. Let's get to some hip hop. <laughs> so I hit you up. I, I probably should have this out already, but I hit you up yesterday about um, some questions about hip hop and things of that nature. And I figured you were you, you put me onto a lot of music. And with Kendrick Lamar's Kendrick Lamar, why do I keep calling him Kendrick Lamar? With J Cole's album coming out, like and it's like you know the the Lavelle joke about him um, <laughs> going platinum with no features. Mm-hmm. Is that important? Not really. It's a feat. It's it's quite a feat, but okay. Does that imply that? I guess it implies that um, for a very long time that people, a lot of artists have gone, they they've reached certain heights by having certain features, and um, I think you know Kendrick. Mac, wow, you got me doing the same shit. <laughs> um, um, J Cole kind of um, changed the program there and put out an album where he doesn't have any well he has features but not any like high profile features like to say that Kendrick technically if you want to look at it technically he's had features on all his albums when they say no features they mean he hasn't had any high profile no Jay, no Nas, no Lupe Fiasco no notable um, artists featured on his what last two or last three albums. But that shouldn't count as a no feature then. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you still got features. I mean, it's kind of a it's kind of a slight to the people that were actually featured on his album too. Yeah. Like hey, I was. I, this like is you ain't great. nobody. This is great. I'm on a J Cole album. My cut made the album great. And then you read Twitter and people are like, yo. J. Cole's about to go platinum again with no features. <laughs> like, imagine how that guy sounds. Yeah. <laughs> imagine if he said it to like, you and he don't know you're on the album. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the old man Wade show did a million on views with no, with no guests. Yeah. Hey, you know what? <laughs> as long as these guys got paid. Yeah. Oh, no. That's not what people... What was it um, they talk about on um, The Brilliant Idiots? What's more important? Uh, your check of recognition? Ghostwriters make a lot of money. Ghostwriters make a good amount of money. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. shit, Jay did it for years. Uh, uh, Neo still does it. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure Missy Elliott has done it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Hilson, Cameron. There's a lot of um, artists out here who penned other people's hits, and it's not well known. Depending on which genre we're talking about, it's either frowned upon or not. Like, in R&B, it doesn't matter who writes it, as long as the song comes out good. In rap, it's frowned upon. Why is it frowned upon with rap, but not necessarily with, um, with like, R&B? Or even, like, rock? You know what I like, think Have you ever looked is... at, a, like, a rock, like, the, uh, the, the list of writers on a, on a rock and roll track? It's excessive. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You know what I think it is? I think because hip-hop, when it started, it started off as, like, a comp- it was competitive in nature. So you have two men or two women or a man and a woman going at each other. And don't don't get me, um, I don't want to get it twisted. I know that's not what hip hop is all about. But let's say that's, let's, let's just talk about one of the elements of hip hop, yeah. which is battling. Yeah. And it started way back. So people revere the person that can come up with his own rhymes not only his own rhymes, but entertaining rhymes 
that kind of capt- captivates the crowd and everything. So I think in that vein, people want hip hop artists to continue to hold on to that energy and you know just keep it just keep it there don't change it don't let's not be in a world in, of hip hop where everybody's writing everybody's rhymes you have like when it comes to rhyming people really listen to what you say people are really putting your words under a microscope people yeah. are thinking about your cadence people are thinking about how you resonate with everybody in hip hop much like poetry, spoken word, what you say holds a lot of weight. So imagine being a superstar rapper and you're not and you're not the person who wrote your rhymes. Yeah. It's kinda like Are you, know, you who like, are you are who you say you yeah, are? Yeah, all you are is like a it's like it's like being a mannequin. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's there. every yeah, yeah every yeah it's a it's a mannequin. All you do it's you they put you up in front of the store, and every season as the seasons change, you get new <laughs> flow. You get um, yeah. Come Good. winter time, you get the winter outfit. Come springtime, you get the spring outfit. Um, they're constantly changing your shoes, your pants, and everything. You're standing there making the outfit look good, but somebody else is responsible for your look. You know. And, I thought about and, like that. And R and B, it's different because like everybody knows, like I'm sure Lauren Hill didn't write all her all her songs. Yeah. Beyonce didn't write all her songs. Her biggest hit was written but her big her first big hit was written by Neo. Yeah. So there's like there's there's plenty of artists out here who are like praised, who are like iconic, who've had a team of writers in the background working magic for them. Yeah. And nobody really holds it against them. It's just a plus if Beyonce writes a song that happens to go quadruple platinum and everybody loves it. That's a plus. Now, we had the whole thing with Drake a few years ago where there was a reference track that was leaked where, you know, some guy, I forget the guy's name, supposedly wrote the rhymes to a particular song that everybody liked and it leaked and people were, you know, people were talking trash about Drake. He's bounced back since then. And people aren't really mad at him. And, I mean, some artists voice their opinion on, you know, well, he can't be in the conversation of top five artists if he has someone else writing his rhymes. Okay, cool, but that goes back to what I'm saying, where more weight is held on what you're saying, your how clever you are, your wordplay, your wit and everything in the realm of hip-hop. So to have a ghostwriter, to have somebody writing your rhymes, whether people know about it or not, it's frowned upon. Yeah, okay. Do you, does it matter to you, like, when, you, when you're listening to an artist, like, like uh, Nicki Minaj is, I guess, known for not writing her own rhymes or whatever. Does that matter to you? It doesn't matter. Like, I don't... Back in the day, it would have, because back in the day, we had... I was always buying CDs. I wasn't buying MP3s. I was buying CDs... Much earlier than that, I was buying tapes. And what I liked to do was go through the artwork, look at the credits. I knew who producers were. Yeah. I knew, like, I would listen to an album for the first time, listen to a song and say, you know what, I think it sounded like Easy Mo B did this beat. This definitely sounds like Havoc did this beat. This definitely sounds like... Oh, yeah, like, like a, a lot of uh, producers you know, have a track to yeah, sound. They have a particular sound. Yeah. And then I go to the pamphlet and say, oh, see, I was right. This was, you know, but with and with the with the entry of MP3s into the into um you know the mainstream and everything, you have you you don't necessarily not have access to that information. It's just not unless you're actually going like searching for yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, if you're really into it, you can find it. But if if it was, you know, since that that excitement of buying an album, album ripping a plastic off. Opening it up, opening it up, and wondering what the artwork looked like—that's gone. Which is kind of sad, man, because I think it was on. Bless you. Um, I'm trying to think the um, last one that I really um, enjoyed. Uh, Lupe Fiasco, the cool, mm-hmm. it, like his um, the artwork in his um, um, discography was uh, and his um, CD was good. Um, I think some other ones. Those are the ones that I can't really remember. And I would I would assume that MF Doom probably had some dope um, mm-hmm. artwork on, on his and things like that. But I kind of miss the... Don't get me wrong. I love just being able to go on my phone and hit plus 
and download a whole album. Mm -hmm. But I do kind of miss that, like, like you said, grabbing a CD, opening it up, mm -hmm. putting it, in, putting it in your um, CD player, and like bumping it, and like sitting on the bus or the train while you're reading, going through, like you said, going through the artwork, mm -hmm. trying to see like who these writers are, and trying to see how many tracks they they wrote on. Because mm -hmm. it was funny when I first realized what those were, and then realizing how many times I had seen like Art Nobles or mm -hmm. S. Dot Carter. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. And I was like, so it was cool like when I found out that Red Man wrote a lot of his own lyrics. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that was, so that's kind of cool. And it's like, now it's just, you kind of, like, I never thought, and that's gonna, that's actually gonna be a point I'm probably gonna make fairly often. I'll credit it to you. It's like, when you don't write your lyrics and rap, you're essentially, like you said, a mannequin. Yeah. Or, or, or you're a runway model, actually. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Here's a new, here's a new style mm -hmm. for 2018 and you exactly. send out the Migos. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. And uh, now that I think of it, I remember back in the day when we did, when CDs were the, 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 the highest, the most popular platform to use to consume music. Um, I remember actually buying an album, ripping the plastic off, opening it up, looking at the sleeve, the artwork and everything, putting the CD in the drive, pressing play and actually sitting down and sitting down with my headphones and going from song to song wondering what the next one's going to sound like based on what the credits say it's almost like when you sit down and you watch a play yeah. you know the program or you go to a graduation and you wonder what's next in, on the programs the exact same thing what was it or one of my favorite things where you get the random bonus when the lyrics would be in there mm-hmm and you were like, oh, snap, I can read along as a rapper. You know what I mean? So that was kind of cool. Uh -huh. Like, granted, now you can do it, like, on like on your phone, but it's just not the same, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I buy, for example, like, I buy all my comics digitally, mm -hmm. but that's mostly because I just don't have the room, uh, excuse me, the space in my apartment for all those comic books. You know what I mean? I remember a time where you refused to do that. Yeah. You were like, <laughs> hell no, I'm never doing that. I'm never buying that. Yo, it's so comic. convenient. It is. But I, I do miss um, walking to the comic book shop. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to start going and buying, like, uh, trades for, like, the books that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Like, I still, because as much as I like digital comics, I like sitting and, like, flipping pages. It's a little more fun, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. there's that. What do you think of the new J. Cole album? I like it. I, um... I like it. It's very laid back, very mellow. It does have some bouncy songs on it, which is good. Um, I like the balance of it. I do wish that he would come a bit more grittier and harder at times. Yeah. I, I prefer more of that balance than to be on some real, real, like, chill, like, smoke of blood type shit, like, like real woke opening your mind. I, I get it. Um, but you're like me, you're, you're a 90s guy, you want to hear that rah, rah sometimes. Yeah, I know, and I get it. Like, when, when, when you're really trying to get people to open their minds, you want to come at them with a certain energy. And I guess it's better received when there's more like a, a real mellow or like lower tempo. Yeah. You know, so I like it. I've tried to listen to it at the gym. And it's it doesn't that doesn't sound like workout music. It doesn't. <laughs> it's not workout music. But when you didn't plan for what you plan on listening to at the gym, and you just get to the gym, and you're like, okay, what do I have to listen to? Oh, what do I have new? Okay, J Cole, play. You know. Yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, I went through the whole album, like the second, the third to last time I went to the gym, and then the second time, the second to last time I did it again. And then I, I made a mental note to myself saying, uh, yeah, no J. Cole, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's try something else. But I do like the album. I do like it. I'm actually shocked you don't do, like, I, I have specific playlists for, like, specific times. Like, I have, I'm with my Maria. Uh -huh. I have a playlist specifically of music that, like, she enjoys or that we both enjoy. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm going to the gym, I have, like, um, a couple of gym playlists depending on what I'm doing. I have one for, like, the treadmill. Mm -hmm. I have one for, like, um... Uh, like weightlifting and things like that, so I have specific things. For, I'm actually shocked you don't like have like a like you don't put some songs together. Like, I have playlists that. that I made ages ago, and usually I don't think of making playlists unless I have a trip coming up. But other than that, honestly, I think I listen to podcasts more than I do music nowadays. 
I kind of do too. Like the only time I really listen to music is when I'm moving around. Like you know what I mean. Like um, if I'm on my way to, it depends. Like if in the morning, I usually um, put on a podcast when I'm on my way to work because that's kind of like it kind of puts me in. A, if I feel this is something funny to kind of get me in the mood to like get ready to get in there, but. I think that, um, like, well, like, when I first get up in the morning, like, when I'm walking around the house, um, again, I have a playlist, I have morning hip-hop, it's a lot, mm-hmm. it's on a lot of Tribe, it's a lot of Lupe, mm-hmm. um, I, there's some J. Cole on there, you know what I mean, and it's just, like, something to, like, kind of get me going, but once I usually leave the house, I think I usually put on, like, playlists, I usually put on a podcast or something like that, mm-hmm. and it's funny, I go, I go, you ever, do you re-listen to old shows or um, anything like that? Not really. Because on um, the Whiskey Brothers, I listen to them more than I do any other podcast. And I go back and listen to them because it's, it's all comedy. So I'll go back and listen to that stuff. Like the one I sent you, I must have listened to that about twice already because it <laughs> cracked me that up. But so yeah, for the most part, like, I don't know. Like, and like with music, I find myself, I don't, I'm a thousand years old. Like, you know what I mean? That's the name of the show. So a lot of times I get stubborn with my music. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's a track on um I think it's like the third or fourth track on J. Cole's new on J. Cole's new album where it has that da 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 and I'm like, uh, I don't wanna hear this shit. But then I'm listening to it and I'm like, Oh, there's some lyrics behind this. Like you know what I mean? So I wouldn't even get past the flow to listen to the like the lyrics. And I gotta I'm trying to get myself out of like out of that mood. Out of that mood. That's why I listen to the the Chun Li Nicki Minaj song. And I'm like, I kinda like this. Why does she call it Chun Li? I have no idea. I, 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 and I don't listen to lyrics as much as I should, but I really scanned through that song. Well, I really listened to the song, and maybe I'm, I keep missing it, but I kept wondering, why does she call it Chun Li? The part that kind of befuddled me about it was she, she calling herself the villain, but the name of the song is Chun Li, and I'm like, Chun Li's a cop. <laughs> she works for Interpol. Uh, and it was just like, but I was like, you know what? That's the nerd side of me thinking way too deep into this. Mm-hmm. So I was like, ah, let it go. Well, you can be a bad cop, so no such thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was sarcasm. Don't fucking DM me because I don't give a fuck. Uh-huh. Um, but you know what? It, it was probably she probably just called it Chun Li so she could dress like Chun Li for the cover. Why did, didn't she? Cause she that did. was it. That was it. But the, Chun-Li outfit. Not outfit, but there were like Instagram pictures of her dresses like Chun Li. Okay. And plus it's plus it's that gets the attention of if people like Nicki Minaj they're gonna they're gonna buy it anyway. Like mm-hmm. you know what I mean? If you're if you're if you're a gamer or just a nerd, you hear Chun Li, you're already gonna be like, Let me check this out just because I either wanna see hear how bad she was in it, or you just wanna check it out because it's called Chun Li, you know what I mean? Do you like how people are pitting her against um Cardi B? I think it's fucking stupid. It's <laughs> They already have. It's not like pe- other people are responsible. They really do have issues with each other. Yeah, I, I actually just found out about listen. Yeah, listen to the button. I just found out about this. But then, if I had to choose, I'd go with Nicki. I'm sorry. I tried to listen to. I did listen to Cardi's album. It is not for me. It's not for me. I hate her flow. I hate her delivery. She sounds the same on every single song. She's just, it's just, it's just really rat shit. Um, <laughs> it's just really rat shit yeah, it, it kind um, of music to me. But when I, at least with Nicki, you get the lyrics are more, even though, I mean, she's not saying any anything groundbreaking. The lyrics are still more cohesive. Um, the delivery's way better. She runs circles around. In terms of like rapping? When it comes Absolutely. to rapping. When it comes to flows, when it comes to changing her tone, and when it comes to actually everything musical, yeah, she's like like I said, she runs circles. She runs circles yeah. around on Cardi. I'm a fan of Cardi B. You know what I mean? Her album was okay. I listened to it, and I was like, okay, this isn't bad. There's a couple of tracks on there that like, I'm gonna, I might keep a rotation. Mm-hmm. Um, like I like it like that. I was like, okay. Like I can fucks with this, like mm-hmm. you know what I mean. But it's not something that I'm gonna keep in like heavy, ro- like heavy rotation. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. My issue with Nicki is the same issue I have with Drake. They, it's like Nicki has bars, like you know what I mean. I don't like a lot of her music, but when she goes at it, it's like, okay, I'm mm-hmm. with this. Same issue I had with Lil Wayne after um the Carter three two, because you did like three, right? 
I thought three was okay. Okay. But then he put out that I'm um, six foot, seven foot. I'm like, yeah. yo. Mm-hmm. And every time someone goes, um, Wayne's whack, I'm like, nah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I was like, you need to, I was like, first of all, play six foot, seven foot, and then go listen to the car that's you. Because uh, one of my favorite phrases, one of my favorite lines of the hip hop song was, um, I hear him speaking, but they're talking under masks. Stop throwing pebbles at a bulletproof glass. I was like, oh shit. Like, you know what I mean? But, um, Nikki, when she when she goes at it, like she's like she's got flows like a, it's like I am not Jasmine, I am Aladdin. So far I hate these bums are lagging. I was like, oh shit! And but then she puts on some other nonsense like um, you a stupid hell, you a stupid stupid hell. I'm like, oh god, cut this shit the fuck out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But it, but that's how she that's how she makes money. It's like Jay Z always said, I put this bullshit, I put this out to bring people in. The sus the substance is really in the album. I don't really think anybody's looking from. For looking to Nikki for substance, though, not really. I think people are looking to her to be more consistent with her sound and stop chasing a particular bag. That's like because um, I think her biggest hit was Spaceships. I don't even know what that is. Spaceships is a radio hit that she had that is totally different from what you would hear bumping in the hood on a summer morning on a on a summer day. Like, it's really, like, mainstreamy. It's really, like, poppy sounding. Yeah. And ever since she came out with that, she kind of was like, oh, this is my niche? I'll rock with it. Though I'm not mad at her for it, do your thing. If this is what's breaking in the dough, for real, well, certainly do your thing. But once she got a little too involved in that, I was like, uh, you know what? And it's not like I even, like, listen to all her music. I like Nicki Minaj, aside from, like, her looks and everything. I actually do like Nicki Minaj. I like some of the music that she put out, but I don't, I can't say I have a Nicki Minaj album that I can listen to all the way through and then say, okay, I gotta listen to this again. Like, I skip through certain tracks. And, I mean... It is what it is. You know what? Um, me and Marie were talking about this. We were talking about hip hop and um, rappers and stuff like that. And I was honestly disgusted with the new Eminem album. Yeah. And she she um said it best when she goes, "He's trying too hard to sound like these new rappers when he doesn't need to do that. Mm-hmm. Like he's one of the few people, one of the few um rappers who have a fan base mm-hmm. that he never needs to change who he is." Like, Jay's never changed who he was. He's evolved with his fan base. Mm-hmm. But he's never... He's always been who he was. You know what I mean? Um, and, like, that last M album, man, it was... His last two albums, honestly, were kind of disappointing. Like, you know what I mean? It just wasn't... It just didn't seem like... It's almost like he felt the need to be relevant, so the flow was kind of different. And I'm just like... I'm like, dude, you're one of the... You're one of, like, the maybe five or ten... You're maybe, like, the, one of the five greatest rappers ever, like, in terms of, like, flow. And it's like... You put out this bullshit. And M is like, I don't know what, what he's thinking. I don't know. And like, he is one of the best rappers of all time, but that's all he is to me. Like, he has, I think his best album is probably like the Marshall Matters LP. The Eminem show was pretty good. Yeah. Um, and then all the other stuff was either hit or miss with me. Really? Yeah. Um, there's just... I don't know, like, he's one of those rappers who are, like, like, amazing on the mic, but when it comes to body of work, the music, eh, I mean, so, he's... I'm looking, so I'm looking at, um, his, his now, like, Curtain Call was just his hits or whatever, but, um, that song, When I'm Gone, dope, um, what was about his dog, love that, Encore was okay, but it was kind of like, it was goofy. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, the Marshall Man LP2 I thought was kind of bad. I didn't like it. Recovery was cool. I really yeah. liked Recovery. Mm-hmm. Like, the like, that felt like, that that uh, that album went hard, like, start to finish. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people didn't like Relapse. I love Relapse. I do like it. Re- but you know what it was? But, like, these Relapse is one of those albums that holds a special, like, it, you know some albums... They take you. They um. They get you through tough times. Mm-hmm. When I was going through my issues, like relapse, it came out, and Jelani was telling me that like we were talking about, and he was just saying like people don't give relapse a chance. Mm-hmm. So 
um, I heard Deja Vu and he was like talking about his issues and all this other stuff and I was like oh this is I can relate to that like you know what I mean not necessarily the drugs and all that stuff but I can I understand when it's like you're when you have issues and you're going somewhere to deal with them mm-hmm. so I kind of understood it and then like it was and then it had that hint of goofy which you know shouldn't shock you that I enjoy mm-hmm. so I liked that album but I can understand why a lot of people didn't like it you know what I mean and then he puts out recovery and you're like oh snap and I'm like alright cool then he put out um, what was it? I can't remember the name of the album but when he put out Rap God like he just like like six minutes of him just going in yeah uh but yeah, he it's it's just some rappers are just like you don't need to change who you are. Like KRS, like probably still sells out shows doing doing what he does. Like you know what I mean? MF Doom is always gonna be MF Doom. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna get. He's never good. If he ever puts out a club hit, it will be. I don't know what I would do if he. I would. I would. I don't know how I'd react to MF Doom putting out a club hit. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be interesting. You know what I mean? The only, I think the only time he could do something like that is if he was like with Ghost Face or something like that. Yeah. Which I doubt that album's ever coming out. No, we gotta you we got a MF Doom inspect the deck album before we got an MF Doom Ghost Face album. And that's the one that everybody wants. Yeah. I think the they had what, one collaboration that song Angels or whatever? Nah, they have the other one on um Oh uh Mass. Danger Doom. Mass. Yeah. Um into, um, the mask, Miles of the um, mask, angels, and I think another one that was actually close was pretty much a collaboration, but Doom didn't rap on it. Was a song on um, that um, album that um, Ghostface put out called More Fish, which was more like a compilation album. Yeah, Alex's script. I think that beat was sick. I love that beat. Yo, go. Can we? I'm glad that Ghost is really starting to get his due. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, when people start bringing up, like, the best rappers, like, mm-hmm. top 10, Ghost is usually almost always in everyone's top 10, if not mm-hmm. top 20. Yo, because he's been consistent since the 90s. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Red's one of my favorite guys, but Ghost, it's like every two years, you're getting a Ghost, you're getting a Ghost mm-hmm. out. And, like, he, and it's not even, like, bullshit. Like, he puts in, like, he puts, in, there was one album I think you said you didn't like a Ghost, right? Was it like the um, Emerald City one or something like that? No, I love that one. Was that the one with House Guest? Yes. With Fab, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that album was crazy. And I liked how he, like, he did a, a whole theme on that one. Like an yeah. R&B theme, I like that. Um, I think the album that I didn't like was Apollo Kids. Oh, now, not to be confused with Apollo Kids. The song, The right? song of okay. Supreme Clientele. Supreme Clientele. That true. album is <laughs> sick. I mean... I believe it's called Apollo Kids. It's an album. It might have been, I want. It might have been the last album he put out. It's the last solo album he put out. I know he put out. I think he put out an album with uh, Killer Priest called Woo Goo or something like that. Really? Yeah. Or maybe that was some kind of promo that I got confused with. Um, oh wow! I didn't know. He, I didn't know he had an, uh, a a recent song out called New God Flow. Oh, no. Kanye, Pusha T, and Ghostface? Is that new? No, that's not new. That came out on a Cruel Summer album. Oh, oh he has an album out? The Brown Tape? I'm looking at it I'm looking at it now, and it's like he's got an album that came out this year. I didn't even know that. Oh, I'll check it out. Now look at that. Ghostface, uh, Ghostface Killer and Apollo or something or other. But yeah, Ghost is that dude. Um, do you... Um, Alright, here's a good one. This is a conversation I, I love having with people. Is Biggie overrated? Um, I wouldn't say he's overrated. I think he gets his just due. Except, I believe that people put too much stock into his potential before his untimely death. Yeah. Um, dude only came out with two albums. Yeah. I don't know how... You can be the best of all time. How you can be the greatest ever with just two albums out. He may have had a really good run. Plus, he had too many features. <laughs> <laughs> he may have had a really, really good run, and he had a really, really good team because despite all the other bullshit Bad Boy did put out, and 
Bad Boy actually at that time didn't put out a lot of bullshit. No. They put out some bullshit, but most of it was really good. Yo, they knew how to make... Puff knows how to make money. Yeah. So he cashed in on all that stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Maze, Faith Evans, The Locks. And can I just say that Styles P, was used to, everyone used to call him the worst rapper of The Locks. He was just ahead of his time. Like, you know who called him that? Yeah, they were the, thought the Styles was the worst was the um, weakest link of The Locks. I always thought Sheik was. I, he wasn't whack, he just wasn't the go-to guy to me. Yeah, but I, I can agree with that. Like, because his first album was dope. Um, Walk With Me. Okay. Walk with me was a tough was a was a, was a tough track, but I'm tough album. Um, but Puff knew how to make money in the '90s. Like he knew that like like all this dance stuff, like all this like poppy stuff. He knew that this was stuff that he could like di- were stuff things that are gonna play forever. Like we're always gonna hear all about the Benjamins in the club. Uh-huh. We're always um, every so often you hear um, Bad Boy with Maze. Yeah. It will all pop for that, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like they he knows how to like he knows how to make hits. Right? Mace, Mace's first album was trash to me. Uh I went back and listened to it, it's, it's pretty bad. It's it's I thought it was pretty bad the first time I heard it. When I first heard it, I, I remember I was living in Connecticut and when that album dropped, I went and got the album, I put it in my um, C D player and I was like, uh, this is kinda I mean the I think it only had like two or three songs that I liked. But other than that, it was trash to me. It really wasn't that good at all. Like I can, I, I can honestly say that, like, wow, I don't know why the fuck I like this. You know what I mean? But it, it was fun. Like you know what I mean? You kind of. Yeah. But like I went back and tried to revisit it. I'm like, wow, this was bad. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't remember why. I must, I had really bad taste in music. You know what I mean? But I was, this was like right around the time I think I first really started getting into hip hop. Like no, you know, that's I'm wrong because I think my first introduction was like in like. Elementary school because I think because my pops was always bumping um, a tribe called Quest. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like I can't even say that. And after a tribe called Quest, he bumped um, the Chronic was playing like heavy in my house. Like you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style was always playing heavy in my house. Mm-hmm. So I should be, I can't even say that. Like Onyx, I think was like one of the first like singles that I bought. Like you know what I mean? The first one I ever bought was Criss Cross. Ugh. And that wasn't even <laughs> the first. Actually, the first single I ever bought was on. Cassette tape and it was Ice Cube. You know how we do it. That was the first. Dude, that song ever. still goes hard, man. I love that song. That was wow, the first wow. cassette single I ever purchased. The first album was Criss Cross, Totally Cross Out. The first album I bought. I've had. I think we've had. I've had this conversation with you before, and maybe even on the phone. But the first CDs, the first tapes I bought with my own money, uh, Cameron Confessions of Fire and Mystical Unpredictable. Yeah. Mattapan Music. Yep, Madison, <laughs> that's where I got my... Dude, it's my sad that's not there anymore, man. That, like, um, yeah, that's where I got a lot of music from. I I saw a church in there one time. Seriously? Yeah. He was in there. I walked in there one time. I'm standing at the counter, and I'm you know how you kind of scan the shelf? Yeah, me? man. Yeah. You're yeah, just looking, okay, what do they have? What do they have? What do they have? And then I just happened to look to the left. And I see a dude looking real mysterious. <laughs> he looked my way. You know how Tretch always wore his shades? Yeah. He looked my way and I was like, Tretch? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I know he's being low key and everything. And I'm not the one who gets like starstruck or anything. Yeah. Like, I could, like, Jay Z could be across the street right now. I'll just look at him. And, like, and then keep it moving. Like I'm not gonna run Jay. up to him and be like, oh Jay, what's up? What's good? Like I don't I don't have anything to say to him. Yeah. But it's nice to see, you know, someone that I often see on TV. I think I I think I only get starstruck when it's like someone I think I'd only be starstruck if it was somebody like that was in my field or like motivated me. Like if mm-hmm. I met um Charlemagne, mm-hmm. I might be a little starstruck just because like after listening to his audiobook and seeing like what he's into I would love to pick his brain about, like, you know, how to continue doing what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. If I met a couple, like, some of the writers and artists from um, comic books, I might be starstruck with that. Like, Garth Ennis. If I ever met Gar- Garth Ennis, I'd turn into an eight-year-old girl. Mm-hmm. It's a dude who wrote The Punisher Max. Okay. So, I, I think it's a little different, man. But, um, it, um, Jalen Rose brought something up when he was talking about, like, Biggie, like, being, like, one of the greatest of all time. And I think that people also need to distinguish the difference between the greatest of all time and, like, the greatest albums of all time. Like, you know what I mean? I, Ready to Die is still, is, is still really good, but I don't I don't think it's... Would you consider Ready to Die or Life After Death one of the five greatest hip-hop albums of all time? If 
five? No. I remember Ready to Die left the mark on me because of how disturbing it was at the end. I was I'm sick like, of niggas lying. I'm sick of I was niggas like walking, matter of fact, 13, 14 years old. I think like, actually like 12, 13 years old listening to this album. And of course, I can't just bump it in the house with my mom there because my mom, a Haitian woman, religious, she's not trying to hear curse words. Yeah. So I had to play it. It's, it's funny that the, the differences between the two of us, like, my parents <laughs> were bumping, like, Prince and yeah. The Chronic and, like, you had uh-huh. to keep shit here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm listening to it. I remember when I first got to, like, the last song where he's committing suicide and the um, song Me and My Bitch. I was like, God. Oh, what just happened? Like, <laughs> this dude just off himself? That's crazy. Yeah. Or like, I know it sounds kind of stupid, but imagine being a child in a place where all I did was watch Tom and Jerry. All I did was play Street Fighter all day. Yeah. All I did was watch Nick, you know, Nickelodeon and stuff like yeah. that. To be exposed to a guy who's, you know, in the drug game, doing some gangster shit, um, like getting in this relationship with a woman who's you know in the gangster lifestyle with him, and she ends up getting shot and killed, and you know he's going through all this depression. That he has his ups and downs, and one day it just you know he just things just boil over, and he decides to off himself. That shit was disturbing for me. So I remember after listening to it like the first time, I kind of had to take a break yeah. to ingest what just what I just experienced. Yeah. Although I didn't experience, experience it myself personally, those rhymes, the, the, the way it was orchestrated, orchestrated was so vivid, so believable, so like, it was just put together so well. So it did have an effect on me after, you know, I didn't think of suicide or anything yeah. like that, but it was, it was crazy. Yeah, it, it, it leaves like an emotional mark when you hear something like that, and it kind of stays, like, it kind of, things like that, like, especially if you're not young, kind of stays, you're like, you're not, especially if you're not expecting it, and you're like, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, shit, you, I'll say something. Uh, fun fact I love mentioning, Method Man was the only rapper on Biggie's first album. Really? Yep. Hmm. Like the, uh, this is not including yeah, like remixes, remixes stuff like that. But Method Man was the only only rapper on Big's first album, which I thought was like pretty fucking cool. And it was I remember like if you listen to like interviews with him, like Method Man like like takes it like a like a badge of honor. But you know what I mean? That Big like would put him on an album, like you know what I mean? So especially because that was like really early in his career. I don't they didn't had his first his first album had to have dropped by then, right? Um, yeah, it already dropped. Can I just say, to Cow 2000 gets a bad rap. It wasn't a very well put together album. <laughs> it wasn't trash, but it wasn't a very well put together album. I think they made it too much of a production. Yeah. With all the skits and all the stuff going on on the album. Like, dude, just give us like 15, 18 tracks and call it a day. Like I don't need, tracks on I don't need I don't need the whole, like, the whole theme, I get it. Have a theme on your album. But I don't need all this extra shit, these extra skits and interludes and everything. Come on. Like, it just wasn't for me. I still love Tekal. Tekal is a dope-ass album. I would I would listen to Tekal on a ride to Connecticut. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Tekal 2000, I just like a few songs off of it. That's it. Uh, I gotta wrap it up in a little bit, but I got a good one for you. What are your three favorite hip hop albums of all time? Like right off the top of your head, like, because I know for me, I can give you the three. Like for me, it's American Gangster by Jay Z, um, Lupe Fiasco, The Cool, and my number one is probably Dame to Do a Mouse in the Mask. Um, I'm gonna go with um, Mob Deep, The Infamous. Um, damn, what else can I think? People of? sleep. People. Another another group that doesn't really get mentioned when you talk about the greats. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like um, Hell on Earth was my shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, Hell on Earth was dope. Um, yeah, no, what's but the, the infamous? My boy. I remember I was in like middle school. His name was Kevin Smith, I guess. And he was like, "Yo, Greg, 
you got to hear this. I got this on tape. You got to listen to it. It's by this group called Mob D. It's so good. All the songs are dope. By the time you're done listening to it, you're going to wish it was never over. I listened to it, and he was right. I wish that shit was over with it. Yo, that's the mark of a really good album, though, when you're listening to it, and you're like, yo, why does this have to end? Okay, so Mob D, the infamous... Only built for Cuban links. The viral one. Yes, I love that album. And then I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to go the, with... Um, I might want to go with... Um, Mad Villain. I was going to say, I'm shocked that like, Mad Villain wasn't like, the first, first one you mentioned. Well, they're not in any particular order, but when I think of... It might change if I really sat down and looked yeah. at what my top three were. It, it might be different if I had, you know, if I really put a lot of thought into it, but for right now, let's just say Mad Villainy, Only Built for Cuban Links, and The Infamous. Speaking of oh, Built for Cuban Links, oh, Only Built for Cuban Links 2 is one of the few albums that had a sequel and didn't disappoint. Yes, I agree. House I of Flying Daggers is my shit! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, know, like that one, like that one gets me amped. Like if I'm at the gym and I'm on the treble and that comes on, uh-huh. Zoda's in the front, let the beat pump. I'm like, you know, I, I, you know, I go on in there and I just start jogging. I'm like, yo, this is my shit right here. And the song he did about go, oh, I'm, I'm not go space, old dirty, mm-hmm. like that was touching. Yeah, it was. Yeah, good old days, man. Yeah. Um, we should do another one of these, one of the least hip hop um things. So there's a lot to go on. We haven't even, we haven't even discussed like Jay and Nas or. Like, you know, the Fall of Lupe fiasco. <laughs> I shouldn't say the Fall, because he still puts out really good music. Like, dopamine. Yeah. I like the first, like, six tracks on there. After that, it kind of, like, dies off of me. Yeah. But when he, but then I love that song. But baby, don't stop till the dopamine hits you. <laughs> right, been spending the Old Man Way Show. Thanks, Just Greg, for coming in here. I'll let you go so you can go back to studying. All right. Uh, can I get a damn it, Wade? Damn it, Wade. What the fuck was he, a sex caller? No. <laughs> damn it, Wade.